Joe, please remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Thank you. 
our scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know and know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I was growing up, my family had three blessings that we did at school time. They started at my grandparents' house, and I don't know how long they have been a part of our family. Father, we thank thee for the night and for the blessed morning light, for rest and food and loving care and all that makes the day so fair. Be present at our table, Lord, be here and everywhere, and Lord, this table blessed and grant that we may feast and fellowship with you. There's a third one that has escaped my memory, but I will tell you that it's the short one. And it is the one that is most commonly done when my family gets together, because it's the short one. As we read this text from Ephesians, we think about these important prayers throughout our lives. Your family probably has prayers that they have said for generations. In just a few minutes, we will say together the Lord's Prayer. There's a book that was gifted to me as I started ministry called We Pray With Her. And it offers devotions and prayers on the topics of call and struggle and courage and persistence and resistance. There are prayers for discernment and prayers for dropping off the baby at daycare for the first time. There are prayers for helplessness, loneliness, and for when you just can't. There are prayers for a difficult meeting and for daily busyness. There are prayers for boldness and for a social justice march. There are prayers for surviving and prayers for praise and thanksgiving. I also think about Anne Lamott, an American novelist and nonfiction writer, political activist, public speaker, and writing teacher who said that her two truest prayers are help, 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 and thank you, thank you, thank you. Our text this morning is a turning point in this letter to the Ephesians. This first half of the letter has invited us to join in praising and thanking God for the plan of salvation that has united us in Christ. And next week we will turn to the second half that will encourage us to persevere in the social and personal dimensions of our lives as new creations in Christ. These first three chapters have been about what God has lovingly done for us. And these last three chapters that we'll begin next week are about how we live in response to that love. And as we continue to explore what it means to develop authentic relationships rooted in radical love, we recognize that we must be both deeply connected to God through 
prayer and thanksgiving, and also put in the necessary work to be fully committed to those authentic relationships. And as we approach this turning point, I think it's important that we remember the challenges that the Ephesians were facing. They were facing powerlessness, instability, and a lack of resolve that are related to an insufficient sense of identity. And this prayer, pray in Ephesians, is for power, love, and the fullness of God. And it ends with praising God's power that goes beyond anything we can imagine. And as we think about this indescribably powerful love, I don't know that I have ever been able to experience that on my own. Because this love is meant to be shared. It's meant to be experienced in community. It's meant to be something that is not done in solitude. Walter Wink is an American theologian who wrote several books on Jesus and nonviolence. And in his book, Embracing the Powers, he writes, action without prayer is soulless, and prayer without action lacks integrity. As we continue through Ephesians, we'll begin to see that our prayer is an absolute necessity. And our prayer must be followed up with action. As we continue to form these authentic relationships rooted in radical love. We feel this power and love and fullness of God when we are community. We have all been in situations where we are sitting in a hospital, praying together as someone we care deeply for is undergoing surgery. We have sat in living rooms, offering words and presence after someone that we care deeply for has lost a loved one. We have been there for 2 a.m. phone calls, for a friend who is experiencing crisis. And it's in those moments that oftentimes we don't know what to say. <laughs> Even I, as a pastor who has a seminary degree and took pastoral care classes, sometimes our words fail us. And yet, we feel the power and love and fullness of God in those moments. Because when we can't find the words for prayer, the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. And in this book, We Pray With Her, it's again a reminder that we are not alone in the things that we experience. We are not alone as we try to figure out the height and depth <coughs> and breadth of God who is beyond our knowledge. As a seminary professor, in one of my first days of seminary, saying that we know God truly, but we don't know God fully. Because God is so expansive and Authentic and deep and rooted in radical. Ephesians, we're invited to expand our understanding of who God is. And it's in this prayer that we've heard in verses 18 and 19 
I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ the totality of all, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I pray that you have the power to comprehend with all the saints. Because there are saints who have gone before us, who taught us the prayers when we were children, who taught us the Lord's Prayer, who taught us the family prayers, who taught us and showed us the radical love of God. And we carry those prayers with us. We carry with us the important prayers from our lives. We carry with us the deepest prayers of our souls, the ones that are beyond words, that invite the Holy Spirit to speak on our behalf. And at the root of those prayers is always a prayer of praise. Because no matter what, no matter what is going on in our lives, no matter the overwhelming sense that we feel sometimes from anxiety and nervousness, we know that God is at the center. And that with prayer and thanksgiving, we are able to rejoice. We are able to see past what is right in front of us. And we are able to be deeply rooted in the love of God that invites us to love Now to him, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask for of him. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would the usher please come forward?
to our time of sharing our joys and our prayers this morning. We want to wish a very special happy birthday to Patsy. So happy birthday to you. I will not announce your age unless you want me to. Are there other birthdays or anniversaries, Derek? <laughs> we celebrate with Jerry and Annie for 55 years of marriage this Friday. And Annie shared with me that she is hoping they make it to Friday. <laughs> Are there other joys or concerns to share in the community this morning? Seeing that, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God. God who continues to inspire us and show us more about who you are. We bow our knees before you this day, giving you all of the thanks and praise of our hearts. Thanks and praise for your deep love and care for us, for the grace that you abundantly pour over us. We give you thanks. Oh God, we give you thanks for the ability to gather together to worship you on this day. To dive into your word, to sing hymns of praise, to be in community with one another. Oh God, we give you thanks for birthdays and anniversaries. For the love that you have infused in us that we can share with one another. Oh God, we also know that there is deep division and hurt in our world. There are places where your love is ever needed. The places where your unity and justice and peace are born out. So God, we ask that you heal the divisions both far and deep. The ones in our world and also the ones in our hearts. Oh God, you have called us. You have called us to authentic relationships rooted in radical love. You have called us to be your hands and feet in the world. And you have shown us the places where our work is necessary and good. Oh God, we offer up to you all of our prayers. Prayers for hope and peace, for justice and mercy, for healing and hope. Oh God, you know the deep prayers of our hearts, the ones that have not yet been shared aloud. The ones that are beyond words. We lift each and every one of them up to you. So God, be with us this week. 
Be with us as we face the things we know are coming and the things that somehow show up out of nowhere. May we always see your work in the world and share your radical love. And now it is as your beloved children that we pray together the prayer that you first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I want to remind you that the altar is always open for prayer. And I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 539, O Spirit of the Living God.